Christopher Lee Clark, and I'm originally from Charleston, West Virginia, currently living in Princeton, West Virginia. Um, and me? Who am I? What do I do? Um, I create to live. I live to create. It's basically a continuous cycle that never stops repeating itself uh, over and over again. Uh, I think it's kind of like a mantra. Like, I think it's why I get into the pencil drawings, because it's like one line after another, and you just keep going and going and going. It's all about the detail. You do some pretty detailed drawings. It gets intense. I think it's always been about that idea of being able to keep it with me. Mm. Like, you know, when you're in class, or sort of growing up, like, you, you, you always have pieces of paper with you, or little pieces of graphite or pencil or something, and you're doodling and doodling and doodling. Maybe it's like on the side of an assignment, you're hearing a lecture, and, you're, and you can draw along with it. I think I've always wanted, I kept the art with me wherever I go, and so it's kind of traveled with me in, you know, various mm. forms uh, yeah. of notebooks and whatnot. So it just... I, I think that kind of medium, you know, you just, you can't help but uh, kind of rush back to the pencil, you know, or the pen, and uh, put it in little places. Beautiful. So you do some really small, detailed work, but you also do some pretty big work, too. Can you tell us about that? Well, that's the thing. It's like you can only shove the ideas into small places for so long, and eventually they're going to explode. They're going to get out. Um, and I think in the case of, like, the mural project here in Princeton, like, that was in a case of a sketch kind of coming out of a, a notebook. People, you know, these growing ideas that have been going on for a while about, you know, get the art out there, let's, let's let people see it, and let, let them know it's being created in a place like this. And, uh, and there it went on the wall. I mean, that was, that was huge. <laughs> 150 feet by, what, 30 feet or so? I mean, that was, that was pretty big. That's <laughs> huge. What was it like from the sketch on the paper that you did when you proposed the project to the reality of creating a project. Was it shocking how big the wall was even though? Well, yeah, you, you start down here and then you realize the thing that you're standing in front of, the, the thing you're standing in front of is literally a, a canvas about four or five times your own height and there's no way you can reach it. You're suddenly realizing that your arms can't go that far, you know, you're gonna have to get scaffolding, you're gonna have to get maybe some kind of weird device to, to throw you up in the air so you can, you know, do a line, fall down again, go up again. It was even, I think, one time I thought of rappelling off the side of the building down it to reach like the small nooks and crannies at the top, um, but uh, but crazily enough, it's it's come together. And that sketch, in whatever weird way that it's like mutated over time, has like ended up on that wall. And uh, it's been interesting to get the ideas, you know, of other people. Like you know, again, in, in the case of this mural, you know, being the book mural, people had a real passion for the things they wanted to see on this wall, and then kind of starting to make compromises to be able to kind of bring in other people's loves, you know, to a wall that was, I don't know, I, I know between me and John, John Drell who worked on the wall, like, I mean, we already had an idea of what we wanted it to be at one point, but then it's like, this is a community community mural, you know, you, you wanted to start feeding some of that into it, and it's, it's just crazy how it, it grew into what it became. Yeah, it was really cool. Now, that's not the first time you've done something really big uh, to thrill the community. Could you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the circus animal? that you contributed, <laughs> and what was that all about? The, I think the, the elephant is like the, is a classic example of a snowball effect. You, you start out with an idea, you start working on it, and then once you like, you get to a certain point with it, like in the case of the elephant, it, it started out as like a head. Like, you know, but you can't, you find out later on that once you make an elephant's head the size of an actual elephant head, people start to expect a body, like it has to, it has to come, like, you know? And, and then you get the body and you're thinking, well, I can have leg. you can't have a body without legs. And so you end up, you know, the legs, the tail, the trunk, and the tail, and it's, it's all there. Like, it gets, it's crazy. Well, in general, uh, I've been in and out of, I guess, the theater my entire life, probably since, like, three or five to now. Um, I guess consistently at least one to, like, maybe one. I'm looking in weird places now. I try to do at least one play a year, even if it's not big. Uh, between here and Charleston, it's, like, been a consistent thing. Uh, um, but th that's kind of fueled my, you know, passion to want to get involved with things like the Renaissance Project here and how, you know, they're wanting to rebuild I, the, this theater that's just been sitting vacant for who knows how long. I mean, it, it's been, but, but honestly, I feel like in the state that it's been in in years past, it's just kind of become deader and deader and I feel like it's finally going to come back to life. Um, and it'd be great to have a space like that in town. Um, Especially for you know smaller theater groups that want to come and bring shows here, you know it's it's one thing to like have a place like the Chuck Matheny Center, which 
sure you could put on a, a small show there, but sometimes it just doesn't feel right, you know, for that kind of scale. And I think this will be perfect for lots of people who want to put on like one act shows and, and things like that. It's it's it's, it's going to be great. Well, well, the, the the odd thing about the tiles from the theater were that you know they 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 passed them out to various artists. Each artist got to take a tile and kind of run with it with their own ideas. But you know immediately, I think there was a lot of conflict in that because because you're, you're you're sitting there going, well, these are architectural details the building and you're kind of wanting to preserve that to some extent so how much do you want to like take that and change it into something else this might be but I mean and so I think I think every artist had to sit down and decide like how far they were going to take it away from what it was I think some people took the tiles and literally tried to make them look like ornately painted versions of what they might have been at that time um, other people you know imagine even myself at times imagine just that that outer border on there becoming literally a picture frame and then trying to fill some kind of image or scene, you know, within that space. Uh, so, the speaker, um, it was like so easy to recognize uh, your speaker, there was no mistake um, about who could have been responsible for that. Um, can you tell me about the speaker and your process with it? Oh, the pumpkins. Yeah. yeah the, the, what was it like to get speakers to paint on? Well, that was, that was interesting because especially after we got the speakers and we discovered that the speakers are actually part of a set, you know, that went to the old... Um, I need a I need a drive-in. I need a drive-in theater, and, and so you had the two speakers, and you had the the piece that mounted on top of the pole, and you really came down to deciding whether or not you wanted something that could, you know, link up, uh, and, and be like a unit or a set, uh, versus you know separate bits. And so I started thinking of Pumpkin Patch and really wanting to be able to you know, give someone the possibility of linking these three together as three little pumpkins in a pumpkin patch, maybe that could still be set up to be a little sound system. Anyways, <laughs> now I can imagine it.